He was sitting at the bar when Cindy and Brianna walked in. No woman who entered could help but notice him. Cindy wanted one thing and one thing only. She wanted to know what his cock tasted like. As she passed him, she noticed him noticing her and stopped for a moment and whispered something in his ear. Do you know him, Brianna asked. No, I've never seen him before in my life. Then what did you say to him? I asked him if he was fantasizing about my mouth fucking his cock. Cindy, what? He's gonna be on you all night now expecting to get some. There's not a thing wrong with that. I'm grown and I want some. I haven't had a man come in my mouth since I broke up with Daniel. And quite frankly, I miss it. I miss the power and intensity of making a man come. And as far as him following me around tonight, maybe he will and maybe he won't. If he's scared, he might not. Not all men are comfortable with a woman who's in charge of her own sexuality. It scares them. But, and this is what I'm looking forward to, if he's not scared, he'll stick around and see how far he and I can take this. And if he does, it might very well be a hell of a night of damn good sex. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that the five senses are the most direct link to no holds barred coming. In that tiny instant, I supply him with three of the senses, sight, sound, and smell. Now all that's left are taste and touch. Most people assign soul power to the genitals, and that's why so many people are underserved and dissatisfied. When I fuck a man, I fuck him with the words and sounds that roll off my tongue, with the lingering scent of my perfume that wafts by his nostrils, the faintest brush of my fingers against his skin, my red full lips pursed with promise, the taste of my lips touching his, my tongue tasting his tongue, and his tasting mine. I plan to make him come with more than just my lips or my pussy wrapped around his cock. I plan to make him come with my mind and body. I plan to march all five of his senses and mine out on the dance floor and do the dance that lovers do, and that she did. It didn't take long for him to approach Cindy. Hi, I don't believe the two of us have met, at least formally. My name is Mark. I'm Cindy, and this is my girlfriend, Brianna. Knowing full well what was soon to take place, Brianna found herself much more titillated by it all than she would have expected herself to be. She was wet between her legs and silently wished she could be as forward as her friend, Cindy. As if reading her mind, Cindy suddenly broke into Brianna's thoughts. Mark here has never seen the view from the terrace. I told him that we would take a walk with him so that he could see it. We, Brianna echoed, and with that, Cindy whispered in Brianna's ear, don't be such a chicken shit. Come with us. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, and you're free to leave whenever you like. I'm going to skip over some passages here. As soon as they were upstairs, Cindy handed Brianna a glass of soda and told her to take a swig. Cindy had been drinking hers while they were climbing the staircase. It was very cold outside and usually after mid-October, so people stopped coming up to the terrace. By the time, by this time of the year, mid-January, they were pretty much guaranteed privacy. Not that Cindy cared. There was a part of her that enjoyed the intrigue of it all. The possibility of being caught out in public with a cock inside of her mouth thrilled her immensely and she was sure that it would have the same effect on the very handsome young stranger standing behind her with his hard cock pressing into her back. While Brianna stood by watching, anticipating what would happen next, Cindy sprang into action. She turned to face Mark, whispering something in his ear. Are you going to feed me some of that nice hard cock of yours now, or what, she asked. Cindy was intent on isolating the act. Foreplay was a wonderful thing, but often the lack of foreplay could be just as big a turn on. She wasn't going to kiss him or straddle his cock with her pussy. She was only going to suck his cock, and she was going to suck it good. Cindy freed Mark of the pants and briefs that held his impressive <clears throat> member hostage and immediately wrapped her lips around him. She had taken great care to stay fully hydrated throughout the evening. And she had chewed gum and drunk plenty of juice and Coca-Cola, even biting on a lemon just moments earlier. She had learned a long time ago that you couldn't give good head 
if you were dehydrated. <laughs> and even if you were, things like chewing gum and sweet drinks and lemons went a long way to create an abundance of saliva in your mouth. She had every intention of wetting his cock completely. She planned on sliding up and down the length of his tool with the greatest of ease and with great veracity. She wanted to taste every last inch of him. Whenever she felt he wasn't wet enough, she would spit on his cock, which served two purposes. It got his cock good and wet again, but it also excited the hell out of him. The sight of her spitting on his cock outdoors just a few feet away from a club full of people was almost more than he could stand. There was something so nasty and so forbidden about spitting on a man's cock, and so fucking sexy. Every now and then, Cindy would talk to Mark. She wanted all of his senses fully engorged.